The Mamiya 6 is the older and less hyped predecessor to the Mamiya 7, and if you basically thought of it as Mamiya 7, but 6x6 instead of 6x7, you'd basically be right. But in this video, I'm going to talk a bit more about the camera, a bit about the differences between it and the Mamiya 7, and talk about pluses and minuses and compare it to some other medium format cameras that I've either owned or shot with a bunch. Briefly, the camera was produced between, I believe, 1989 and 95, and it has three lenses, a 50, which in 35mm terms is about a 30, 32, subjectively, and also mathematically, if you do the math based on the diagonal. It has a 75, which is roughly a standard, it might be like a 45mm equivalent, roughly. And then it has a 150, which I own but have never shot, and that's a telephoto lens. Between this and the Mamiya 7, I think, other than the format of course, there are two big differences, medium differences. Those are the collapsible lens mount. Here's the lens, not collapsed. Wow, it's so compact, you can pack it, wow. As with the Mamiya 7, the lenses are excellent. Uh, this is a late era film camera and the lens designs were pretty sophisticated, at least for the time. The renderings are pretty modern and the lenses are really sharp. I will say that the 50mm itself is a really special lens and a reason to own the camera. It's wide, but not too wide. It's super sharp. It's really contrasty. It's just a gorgeous lens. And this is a bit of a hybrid between a mechanical and electronic camera. The shutter is electronic, so the shutter speeds will be very precise and shouldn't drift, but the frame advance is manual, so you're less likely to suffer from mechanical failures. The 75 and 150, I've shot the 75 a decent bit, it's fine, it's a good lens, it's not mind-blowing. The 150 I can't comment on. Back in the film era, designing lenses wasn't as sophisticated as it is today, and it was a lot easier to design especially a wide-angle lens for a camera that didn't have a mirror in the back going, taking up space, and so you'll find that rangefinders tended to have better wide angles, you know, let's say in the 90s and before, and that's no exception here. The 50 is especially good. Like the Mamiya 7, the Mamiya 6 is a rangefinder, meaning you put a frame on the world, and a lot of people prefer that style of shooting. You may or may not. You might find it distracting. If you do, then you can join the cult of rangefinder and just shoot a bunch of rangefinders like I do. Since I have the MF, you can buy an adapter that goes for, I think, roughly $80, $100, and that'll let you shoot 35 panoramic with uh, sprocket holes showing. So if you want to dip your toes in panoramic without spending like three grand on a, an X-Pan, that's a solid option. As of a few years ago, you could get a Mamiya 6 serviced. I had my Mamiya 7 serviced at the official shop in the Chicago area, I believe, and hopefully that will continue to be the case for quite a while. The Mamiya 6 is primarily a plastic build camera. It's a high quality plastic. It feels perfectly solid to me. The advantages is it's really quite light and super easy to carry around all day. If you carry this around for a day and then carry around even a Hasselblad, but especially like a big chunky mirror camera, you'll really notice the difference in weight. The Mamiya 6 is super easy to carry. It's also battery efficient since the battery electronic parts aren't doing much other than running the shutter. Uh, you can get literally dozens of rolls out of a battery. Honestly, on my Mamiya 6 and Mamiya 7, I'll change the battery every like year or two just from paranoia because I don't want a battery to go out on me and they cost like, you know, $3, $5, they're not very expensive. Unlike a lot of medium format cameras, the Mamiya 6, one has a meter, it's a center weighted average compared to the Mamiya 7's spot meter. And finally, like a lot of rangefinders, it's a leaf shutter, meaning the shutter is built into the lens, not the body. That means it can sync with flash up to its maximum shutter speed of 1 500th. And also the leaf shutter will not shake the camera when the mirror goes. I know some people claim they can hold their Hasselblad or whatever to like 1 15th and uh, I'll take your word for it, but I like the peace of mind of having a leaf shutter personally.
Uh, first off, it's not a cheap camera. I haven't checked the prices in the immediate past. I know the Mi 7 has gone up a lot in price. The Mi 6 has always been just a bit cheaper than the Mi 7. So that's the second thing is that it's a square format. You might love square format. You might hate it. I think more people dislike it than like it. Um, personally, I enjoy it quite a bit, but I don't suggest spending, you know, 1500, 2000, 2500, whatever these go for nowadays. And then uh, realizing you don't like square format and having to go through the hassle of selling it. There are lots of awesome, cheap square format cameras like the Yashica mats. As with basically every rangefinder, it doesn't focus super close. I wouldn't really recommend this camera for portraits. It only has three lenses. It doesn't have an ultra wide like the Mamiya 7, although that lens is ungodly expensive and takes an external finder. It's a modern rendering camera. Personally, I prefer a borderline clinical rendering, but you, if you want something dreamy, this is not your camera. The rangefinder patch is fine, but if it's your first rangefinder, you might find it a little bit awkward. So for instance, Leicas have much better rangefinder contrast. Even some point and shoots have better rangefinder contrast that is not a strong suit of this camera. Rangefinders also drift. You can fix it yourself, but it's worth noting, meaning that your focus might not be spot on if you're trying to get a thin depth of field shot. Okay, so let's do some comparisons. First up is the Mamiya 7. I think this is the obvious one and I've talked about it a fair bit. I think you can save a little bit getting a Mamiya 6, but really I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think you'll save all that much. And if you want the Mamiya 7, you're not gonna be happy with a different but not worse camera. The Mamiya 7 has a spot meter. It doesn't have the retractable lens, which might make it a little more reliable, but also a little bit larger. There's also a multi-format version of the Mamiya 7, that's the 7.2, which is even more expensive. The Mamiya 7 has a few more lenses, there's for instance an ultra-wide. And the Mamiya 7 has slightly, slightly newer lens designs. In my experience, the 80 for the Mamiya 7 is a really special lens, so, so, so sharp and contrasty. But the 50 for the Mamiya 6 is also incredible. Next up is the Hasselblad 500 series. Personally, I have a 503 and... The Hasselblad definitely offers lenses that focus closer since it's an SLR. It's quite a bit heavier, a little bit larger. Since it's an SLR, it'll offer more precise framing, but it won't let you see the world around you. It won't have rangefinder drift, although I believe the camera can experience some slight drift. It doesn't tend to crop up. The Hasselblads don't tend to have a built-in meter, but you can get a prism with a built-in meter. If the meter's trustworthy and you're using the right type of screen that they expect, and you set the maximum aperture of your lens on it, the Hasselblads are fully mechanical, which means that they tend to be slightly more reliable and slightly easier to service and you won't run out of battery. Honestly, I think it's a pretty simple call. If you tend to shoot a lot of portraits, Hasselblad's an obvious choice. And if you tend to shoot mostly landscape or you like to carry around a camera all day, the Mumia 6 is an easy choice. Next up, the various Rolle Flex uh, bodies. My wife has a 3.5e that I've shot a bit and basically the Rolle offers a more old school lens look since they were not really updated past the 60s or so. And so if you're going for a classic rendering, I'd get the Rolleye. If you want a more modern rendering, I'd get the Mamiya 6. Like the Hasselblad, the Rolleye is fully mechanical. Some of them had meters, but the meter cells are old enough that they tend to be a bit flaky. Your mileage may vary. The Rolleye is a, around 30 plus years older than a Mamiya 6 typically, and that means that they tend to need service more desperately. You might be able to find an original 
uh, Mimi A6 that still works great, but good luck with a Rolai. It'll probably need service if it hasn't had it already. Finally, I just want to give a little shout out to the Yashica Mat. My wife had a 124G, which is an awesome camera for the money. I think she paid about $200 for it. They might be a little more now. A very classic rendering, definitely not as sharp, but a good way to dip your toes into the water of 6x6. And yeah, that's mostly it. I think this is a great choice if you want a 6x6 rangefinder. Personally, I'm trying to slim down my collection a bit, so I'm probably going to sell this one soon. I've been meaning to for a while. Just every time I want to sell it, I go out and shoot a couple rolls and I'm like, oh man, I love this camera. I release a video about once a month. I'm going to have, I think, just one more review coming up of the X-Pan. Also have some comparison videos, you know, comparing films, cameras, whatever. Uh, so you can see how different they are in real life. So if that sounds interesting, feel free to subscribe. I hope you have a great month.